Hello, thank you for watching. My name is Brendan Bonsack. In this video, I'm going to show you a little tool I've been working on that helps you put together the performance view for a contact instrument. One of the things that bugs me about contact, despite all the wonderful things that it does, is that there's no real easy way to lay out the knobs and the buttons. Um, so I've made a little online tool, which is free, anyone can use, uh, to help you build the performance view. So let's get right into it. We'll open up Contact. And uh, Toy Piano is something I've been working on. Uh, a little rite of passage for all sampling people. We click the little spanner icon to get into the guts of Contact. And Instrument Options is where we need to go to create an NKR or resource container, which is where Contact keeps the graphic resources it needs to build the instrument. So as you can see, I've got nothing in there. I've got my samples. Um, so what I'm going to do is create a file. I'll just call it Toy Piano. Um, dot NKR. And it will say that you haven't got one yet. So do you want to create one? And I say yes. And you can see that it's packaged nothing. But it should have created a folder where my instrument lives. So if I go back to... Uh, my directory, where well, this is the Toy Piano directory, and it sees it's created a resources folder. And inside that resources folder, you'll see um, a bunch of folders and one called Pictures. Pictures is where we're going to put our resources, the ones we're going to make in just a moment. So we'll just put that to one side, open up uh, any modern browser of your choice, and go to clockworkmonkey.com and click the Resources tab. And we should see the Contact Performance View Helper. This is a tool to help you make simple layouts in uh, Contact. So this area here matches this area here in Contact. What we're going to do is to lay out the Performance View there. So we choose a file for the background. On the left you have a bunch of uh, elements that you can put in and on the right you have options for those elements. So let's put a button in. Just double click, puts it in the corner, and just click and drag to the position that I want. Now you'll notice that it sort of snaps to uh, a five pixel width. I can change that. If I make it one, it'll be really smooth. And if I change it to say 10, it'll uh, jump around a lot more. This can be really helpful in making sure that things are lined up. So we'll put it back to five. So I can just keep adding these. Incidentally, these buttons are from Knobman. Just Google Knobman. These are some of the public domain ones. Well, let's add a label. So we click Add Label. Drag it into position. And you notice on the right, under the options, I can change what the label says. So I want this to be Reverb. And uh, change the color. Drag that around. It's a nice red. Don't like red. Something a bit more garish. Yellow. Yellow is a reverberant color. Over here I can choose font. Now there's not many fonts at the moment, but I will add some more as we go along. Um, you just go through until you find one. Lobster looks suitably garish. Something a bit bigger. Position. Now you notice it's not quite positioning properly now, so I need to go up here, make it one pixel, and then just fit it into a nice position. That looks pretty good for the moment. Now what I'm going to do is go back to uh, the pixels and go back to 5 so that I can uh, line up my next button a lot easier alongside the one that I've already got. So we have a reverb, so we may as well add a delay. Let's go back to Label, New Label, drag it into position and uh, type Delay go through and change the color again. Now one thing I could have done is uh, in the area that it says default color I could have chosen that at the start and then everything from this point on would be that color every new thing that I add. But for the purposes of this demonstration I'll go through the manual way. So I reckon that's looking pretty good. Reverb delay sitting side by side. But let's say, for example, I wanted to get rid of one of these. And you notice when I hover, it turns blue on the right-hand side. If I double-click, I get this red line around it, which tells me 
that I've selected that one. Just click the trash can, click OK, and it's gone. So I'll just go through the steps, put it back in. You'll notice these buttons don't actually do anything. They're just placeholders for when we put it back into contact later. In the contact script area down here, it's been building the script that's necessary for when we put it back into contact. And you'll notice they're knobs to us, but to contact they're called sliders. So down here it says declare UI slider. And it says control 1, which is the default uh, name, variable name for these knobs. But I'm going to call it something meaningful like reverb, so that when I come to assign actions to it later, when I script it, it'll actually be easier to find it and meaningful to me. So I'll call that one delay. And now you'll say that it's changed that name. And down the bottom it says on UI control reverb. And this is the part where I can script an action later on when we put it back into contact. So with the performance viewer, can also change the height. So let's just give that a little bit more height. I think you can go up to 500. Suddenly that gives me some more options. So I might just uh, go away and play with some positioning. Here's some hold music. Okay, so I like them positioned there, but I've introduced a new problem. It's too bright to see. So if I click Add Block, I get this sort of semi-transparent dark block behind, which will help to overcome bright areas in the picture behind and making the elements more legible. So I can drag the corners, I can move it around. And you'll notice, like any other element, it gets its own options area. So I double click, get red, I can get some different options. Low for a subtle look, high for a very unsubtle look. Let's just go for medium there. So it's not going to win any awards, but it's looking pretty good. Maybe a bit shorter. But it's starting to come together as a performance view. Just tweak that a little bit more. It looks a little bit more balanced. Okay. So now we've got to get this out of here and into contact. So what this tool will do is pull all these graphic resources that we've made, put them into a folder that we can pull it into contact. So we hit the render button at the bottom. Just hold on while it doesn't. Shouldn't take too long. And what we have is a link that says instrument resources. So zip file, click it, download. You'll notice it's pretty small. I'll save it to my computer. Just go to the place where it's saved and extract it. I like to use 7-zip, but you could use WinZip or Stuff It or just the built-in expander. And what you'll get is a folder with a bunch of resources inside. So there's pictures and scripts and some little text files that Contact needs. So we're just going to copy those and paste them into the resources folder that we made earlier and specifically the pictures folder so there they are in there double click the script file this is what our application made earlier just select all copy go into contact and hit the script editor button and because it's new we'll need to click the edit tab just paste it into there click apply so now we have our Performance view area, just pretty grey in this view. We've got our two knobs. We click the spanner. There we go with all its graphic resources. And now, because we're in contact, the buttons will work. Although we need to do some scripting to get them to have any effect on the sound. So let's uh, have a go at scripting one of these buttons. If I click the spanner, go back into the scripting area. So what I want to do is assign an action to the reverb button down here. So I've already got a uh, reverb set up on this instrument. There it is in slot 1 or 0 in contact. And I'm going to affect the time element of that based on what people do with that knob. So set engine par is what I need from the manual. So I go back here, type set engine par. 
I go across in the manual to the engine parameter variables section and send effects and just scroll down and look for the reverb effect if you're using later versions you might see two but I'm using the latest one so it's called RV2 and I want uh, engine par RV2 time so I just highlight that copy it go back here paste that in so that's the parameter that I'm changing and the value of the knob reverb negative one here because it's an instrument not a group zero for the slot and one because it's an insert effect click apply and now if we go back to the performance view we should see the buttons have an effect and that's pretty much it Thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any suggestions or bug reports, uh, just follow the link at the bottom of this video and uh, let me know. Thanks. <laughs>